new district. If you look at my card there, the push cards that, that you guys are very nice enough to uh, knock on doors and hand out, I appreciate that. You'll see 24 different towns. It goes all the way from Boston, where we are, all the way down to Bridgewater. Three cities in the, um, among those 34, uh, 24 communities. Boston, Brockton, and Quincy. There's 727,514 people in that district. It's a big district. It's more than the entire population of Boston. But 300,000 of them are brand new. 300,000 are brand new. So what used to end at Braintree now includes all those great communities from Quincy all the way down to Citra. It also includes towns like Holbrook and Abbey. These are very family-oriented, conservative communities. In fact, if you look at the way the lines are drawn in this new district, Scott Brown actually took 55% of the vote in his special election. Sweet. So for that reason, I will say, while there's still more Democrats than there are Republicans, I think we have a chance. When we talk about numbers, we've got about 11% Republicans in this district. That's one in nine. It doesn't sound too good, right? That means eight aren't Republicans. But if you look at the other side, you say there's about 33% Democrats. Well, that may sound high, but that means two-thirds of the district are not Democrats. What's more than both the Republicans and the Democrats combined are the unenrolled, or what some people call independents. It's after those voters that we must target our marketing. I think there are many, many, many independent voters who are tired of the way Washington is running. They're tired of our chronic unemployment. They're tired of trillion dollar deficits. And they're tired of the approach to the future and growth that is set forth by Obama and the Democrats in Congress. So for that reason, while well, Congress has a, has a, is currently at a 9% approval rating, I think we have an opportunity. So when I'm knocking on doors, when I'm giving speeches to RTCs all over the district, I feel a great sense of optimism for change. Uh, when I've knocked on doors, and many are, well, they're primarily Republican doors, and perhaps the spouse is an independent or a Democrat, we get into some interesting conversations. I've heard people criticize some other Republicans, but I haven't seen anyone really enthusiastically endorse where the Democrats are taking us. So I think people are shopping for an alternative. And if they find someone with an R next to their name that they can believe in, I think they'll help us and pull the lever. So where are we now? Now I know not everybody here is necessarily here for the RTC meeting, but I hope that I'm asking for more than your vote. I have a, a primary in September, it's actually September 6th, for those who aren't up on the uh, election process. The Tuesday after Labor Day, they don't want to have the election because it's the Tuesday after Labor Day. The next Tuesday is actually a Jewish holiday, so they don't want to have it then. So they stuck it in a Thursday. So for us, this is a, a, a wake-up call to say, listen, pay attention. We're all looking for uh, a voting day on a Tuesday, and, and for our primary, it's actually on a Thursday. So we have to sort of remind our friends and fellow voters about that fact. So does that mean that there's another Republican? There is another Republican. He's a young guy named Matt Temperley. He's a recent, um, uh, he, he's in the Army. He's a recent immigrant from Argentina. Uh, and while he's a terrific guy, uh, he doesn't have any real-world experience as far as business goes. Um, but yes, I do have a primary he's opponent. Down in the, I think he's Quincy. He lives in Quincy. That's right. So you know, that's you know, that's a separate issue. Nonetheless, we need to come out and vote for whoever you want to vote.